depression, but a good word makes it glad. Here's Dr. Gloria Mitchell with good news for you, a weekly program to encourage your heart. Hello, my friend. I'm Gloria Mitchell with good news for you. Good news about what it means to be single and also about marriage. So I want you to listen up because I have a guest today who is going to share with us about being single and I'm going to talk about marriage. So we're going to be talking about two different things at the same time, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, we're basing it all on Proverbs 18, 22, which says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Or it just could very well mean as we find in the New Living Translation, it says, the man who finds a wife finds a treasure yes, yes. and receives favor from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So before we begin, I'm going to ask my guest, Stacy King, to tell us a little about himself. Well, first, uh, I am a uh, graduate, uh, soon to be graduate at the King's University. I also attend uh, Faithful Central Bible Church, where I'm actually um, on going through my uh, transition of being one of the ministers. Um, I am also uh, a good working, hard man, a man of God, and uh, and I'm also single. Oh, 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 okay. How long have you been single? Do you mm -hmm. mind telling us? Well, let's go with the fact that I've been single um, for about... Mm, I guess you say by 18 years. 18 years. Okay, you've been single. So you're a yeah. prime candidate for me to talk about this scripture. Well, come on a in. man who finds a wife mm -hmm. finds a good thing. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, <laughs> Stacey, give me the name, a name of a woman that you think would be just a pretty name. What would name you? would that be? I would say uh, Arlene. Arlene? Yes. Okay. Would you hold up this uh, paper here so our listeners can see it? And then I'm going to read something to you, Stacy, which is a message to newlyweds. Okay. Since it was not good for Stacy to be alone, God gave him a helper to share his dreams and his home. Both Stacy and Arlene have left mom and dad to cling to each other during good times and bad. Stacy and Arlene have the same mind. They're learning to compromise all of the time. They submit to one another and satisfy each other's need so they will not be tempted by the spirit of greed. Stacy loves his wife as he loves himself, essentially. Arlene submits completely to her husband's authority. They trust in the Lord with all of their heart and vow to stay together till death do they part. Now, the scripture says in Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is to be honored by all, and husbands and wives must be faithful to each other. Well, Stacy King, in this day and age with so many single ladies out there and you being a single man, I'm wondering how is it that you were able to stay single for 18 years? It's Tell us how you managed that. Yeah, I, As an adult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> being single is like actually a job. It's a profession, you know. I'll <laughs> explain, please. <laughs> When you actually are single and we know how to be single, it is really up to our, as an individual, to know how to become a partner. So for me to basically be on the, um, looking at the fact of being, not wanting to be single, but end up being single, it's based on the fact of how you're in search of uh, being, trying to find that wonderful me. Okay. So. Tell us about this search process. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really a search. Well, you have to, the search is based on the fact that you may, as men, we find uh, women to be, we look at the physical. But then after the fact of knowing that it's not just the physical part of a woman, it's also the fact of going beyond that and seeing how their intellect, how they think, and, you know, and the fact of their thinking process. 
So you got to ask the right questions when you are actually starting to date somebody. Okay, so give so, us an example of what would be, <clears throat> let's say, a first question that you would ask that would either say, yeah, I'm going to move on to the second question, or Dah, this is not the one. Well, sometimes it just it just flows. It's just like this conversation right here. Yes. So it flows based on the fact of how um, the person interacts. So it's like if I was meeting you. And I was asking you, you know, well, your name and, you know, what's your, what is your profession? You know, and you come on this dialogue real quick and I'll show you how the question comes out. You know, hi, my name is Stacey King and you are? Okay. I'm not Roll Arlene. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. No, let's work this. We're going to work this out. We're going okay. to play this thing out. So. All right. So I'm Gloria. Okay. Gloria. Okay. So what is your profession, Gloria? I'm an educator. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been an educator? Oh, probably the last 20 years, if uh, I added it all up. Okay, so when you ask that question, based on the fact, now my next step is, you know, what church do you attend? Oh, a church. Mm -hmm. why, do you, why do you want to know what church I attend? Well, I need to what know, has that got well, to do with it, you It shows the fact of the, your belief system, and do you believe in God? Or you know, I ask the question, are you involved? Not involved in a ministry. So when I ask that question, do you just go to church just to go and... Are you involved in ministry? Do you know how to serve? Okay. You know, I need to how know. How to serve? Yeah. How to serve what? How you serve in ministry. How you serve the Lord. How do you, oh, you know. Oh, that kind of serve. That kind of serve. Yeah, that oh. kind of serve. Yeah, that's <laughs> because, service right there. <laughs> I, 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 I had to clarify that because I, I know some young men. I actually used to be a, a mm -hmm. mentor for some young people who were just uh, released from prison. Wow. okay. And so um, some of the, the men said that one of the first places they would go is to church oh, because wow. they had those nice women in mm. church. Oh, okay. And so I just want to be sure that you're not just checking me out to see if there's something you might want to get from me. No, well, first of all, you know, most women, um, let me just give you a pretty much breakdown. I'm sorry, you know, I'm not trying to break off from uh, what we, my questions are, but I have to also know, you know, what your true belief is. Are you walking the walk that you need to walk in regards to being with God? Okay. You know, that kind of thing. So I want to basically know how involved you are, you know, and what are your, you know, what do you like to do or something like that. Those questions may come up, but I really want to find out you find out about you in regards to, you know, have you been through, you know, your last relationship? How was how was that last relationship? How did it end? You know, and how long was it that you were in a relationship? What if I'm like Susan Boyle and I'm 48 years old and I've never kissed a man? Mm, wow. Okay. Well, that uh, that's that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have never kissed a man and I would basically yeah, say, oh, okay, so that's that's like going with uh, you know um, Cooper that played with the Lakers. You know, he'd been a virgin <laughs> for so long and he didn't touch a woman and he was you know lived a celibate life for all the years he played with the Lakers. Okay. So, yeah, that's, you know, and that's a wonderful thing. And that's, a, find, that's yeah. a gift. And that's, that's a, a gift. gift, right. The celibacy is a gift. Okay. All so. right. So I know that you're working with singles. You told mm -hmm. us that. Right. And so tell us about this organization and how is it that you came to be one uh, one of the leaders or the ones who work with it? Well, I am, I'm helping out with a young man um, by Kerry Neal. He started a group called Keep It Real, Keep It 100. And this is the organization. Keep it one hundred. Right, keep it one hundred, and uh, it's a it's a keep it one hundred. Uh, it's a pretty much a um, very diverse of uh, individual, great uh, people that have uh, career jobs, uh, very um, uh, career minded, and um, pretty much very respectful individuals. Real grown adult conversations that we discuss in a room full of just. Um, diverse people with regards to, you know, what color you are, as well as the fact that male and female come together, try to get an understanding on this thing called life of living single. Do they all have to be single? Yeah, they all have to be single. So when no they married get folks. married, yeah. when they get married, do they have to leave the group? Uh, yeah, because we, we try oh. to focus on the fact of getting everybody, you know, married. But it's not like a match hookup or anything like that. Well, that was but my it's next just, question. Yeah, it's basically, it's, a, it's actually an opportunity for individuals to basically know and get to know somebody and, and meet people they haven't met before. And so we ask different questions and um, people ask, you know, we give the question out and everybody can participate in the room based on the fact of that, that one question. 
You know, and that question could be, you know, um, do you feel like a man should pay for a meal every time you go out oh, on do your first you? date? Do you? Well, it should be, you know, it should be a desire for a man to that let them know that chivalry is not dead. So, yes, I will pay for the bill. If I'm inviting you out to dinner, you know, it is good that I, I'm going to pay the bill. If you invite her out right, to dinner. Right, exactly. You should pay. Okay. But if you're, you just decide that you meet up and decide that mm -hmm. each one you're going Dutch then. Yeah, well, some people... They always feel like, you know, well, maybe we should go Dutch first and then oh. see where it goes. But, you know, if it's in your DNA, you know, and it's your upbringing that, you know, you uh, share and you pay for the meal, you know, it, despite if we meet or anything like that, if I'm going to show you that I'm interested in you, I'm going to pay for the meal. I'm going to show oh. you that there is an interest. But the other thing is that, you know, we don't, we don't sit there and try to um, show the woman, oh, you know, take her to the most famous restaurants and all that stuff. And, you know, you don't want to do all that. You become broke. Oh, okay. Well, well. <laughs> but you take her to a decent <laughs> restaurant where, you know, you, it's respectful and it's, you know, classy or something like that. You know, you ain't going to take her to Sizzler and say, okay, we want to eat a Sizzlers. Now, okay. that's, not, that's not the way to go to try to, you know, show a lady, you know, that you're interested in. But some women would take a Sizzler, you know, dinner. And yeah. Say, but see, you know, it depends on... Who you are trying to date, but at the same time, I'm not trying to show you. I'm just trying to find a nice place for us to eat so that you enjoy yourself as well. And someone will say, you know what? I can go for scissors or, you know, something small or appetizers or they can go to Fridays or something like that. Sometimes a woman that really is not, you know, they will say that's a, what is that? Um, a diva. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right. That's taking so, yeah. the person out. Yeah. But we're looking for that life companion. So do you have some characteristics that you're looking for, some special traits or something, so that if I'm one of those women, then I know uh, that I don't fit it, so I shouldn't even waste my time with you? Uh, well, one, you got to love God. That's got to love God, Yeah. okay. And you got to have a prayer life. Gotta you have know, a prayer right. life. Would you be willing to pray together? Oh yes, that's something major for me. So, okay. Yeah. So my thing is, it's someone that I can, you know, we can um, bounce the word of God off each other and and do our soap, you know. Oh, and do we your soap. So what does yeah. that mean? Do your that's, soap. Yeah, we uh, at Faithful Central we actually have a um, card that we actually use in regards to called soap, which is scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Oh, okay. So All we'll right. read the so, scripture. We'll see the observation would be, you know, observed. And then we'll do the application. Well, how does it apply to our lives? And then we'll go in regards to do a prayer on what we have wrote down or what we have to receive. And based on that, we that would be our soul. Okay. So yeah. based on, yeah. on <clears throat> all of this that you've said so mm -hmm. far, we've yeah. got... Seven, eighteen years or so of searching, and we haven't gotten anybody. How close have you come to marriage? How close? Well, without I came to, crossing I, over. Well, um, uh, one time uh, years ago, but you know, that was a heartbreaking situation based on the fact of me uh, finding out she was in love with another guy. Well, so that was a hard to see. I added on to the fact of the 18 years. <laughs> but I wasn't, I mean, I was brokenhearted. And we all go through a broken heart during that time. But at the same time, we also know uh, without a fact that God still protected you in, in the long run. Okay, so, so you're not like one of those men. Somebody broke your heart. Mm -hmm. And then all the rest of the women have to pay because one person broke your heart. That's right. You're not like that, are you? No. Okay. But you got some women that are like that. Uh, well, well <laughs> we got that. some men like that too. But right, anyway, but, we're running out of time. Oh but I pray that uh, God yes. will bless you to find just that right one. And who knows, her name just might be Arlene. <laughs> May the good news bless your heart. Remember, Jesus loves you, and I'm praying for you. Thank you, Stacy. Have a blessed day.